you are thinking about getting your house ready to put on the market, but you kind of don't know like what to do, what that process looks like. Well, in this week's video, I'm going to go through all the steps that I take to get your home ready to hit the market. So stick around. Hey everyone, my name is Danae Hewitt and I'm your go-to DFW Realtor with Brico Realty Services. Thanks so much for joining today. If you're new here, I hope this video brings you a lot of value. And if you've been here before, thanks for sticking around. Do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, or leave a comment below because the YouTube algorithm loves all of those things. Let's get into this week's topic. How am I gonna get your home ready to hit the market? A lot of listing agents have their own process of what they do and the steps that they take to get your home ready to hit the market. Well, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I go through and it's very similar with other agents, but it's also good information for you to know. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump on the phone and you're gonna talk to me about your plans and what you want to do. Are you selling a house to buy something else? Are you selling a house to rent? And with that, you're gonna tell me a little bit about the house, any updates that you've done to it, how long you've lived in the property. I just wanna find out as much information about about your house as possible before I come to meet with you in person. In that phone call, we schedule a time for me to come to your house. And ideally, I'm setting this appointment if you are married or if you were owning the home with somebody else, I'm setting up that appointment with both of you or the three of you combined, however many people happen to own this house. That way I can give all this information to all of the necessary parties at the same time and I can answer everyone's questions right then and there. After we schedule this meeting, then I'm gonna do my homework. I'm gonna put together my marketing plan for you so I can bring that to you at our appointment. I'm also gonna put some comparable sales together so I can show you the range and what we should ideally list your home for. And I'm also gonna provide you with a net sheet. In that phone conversation that we have, I am gonna ask if you know approximately what your mortgage payoff is, if you still have a loan on the property. That net sheet that I'm going to provide you is going to give you an estimated amount that you will net when you sell your property. So me having that mortgage balance is really good for us to know. All right, so it is the day of our appointment. I'm gonna meet you at the house and I'm gonna go through my marketing plan with you. I'm gonna give you those comments and I'm gonna to talk to you about approximately what you would net in the sale of your home. If all of that looks great and you decide, yes, I do wanna hire you, Danae Hewitt, to sell my house, then I'm gonna leave you our listing agreement, which is a contract between you and me, that you are allowing me to sell your home. I'm also gonna leave you with some other documents that you would need to fill out before we list your property. We'll get to what all those documents are in just a minute. So I'm gonna leave you with all of that information because I want you to have enough time to review it and to read it, and then I will also send it to you electronically for you to sign. How easy is that? While I'm there, if we still have a little bit of time, then I'm gonna go through your house and I'm gonna walk, and you're gonna walk me through. You're gonna walk me through all the things, all the ins and outs about your house. I want you to point out anything that may not be working properly, and I'm gonna tell you whether or not that does need to get fixed, or maybe I'm gonna see if we can let that slide and maybe it'll come up in the inspections and maybe the buyer would want that fixed. It just kind of depends. Let's look at all of your major systems. Let's see if we can kind of peek at the roof, not getting on top of it though. Walk the perimeter of the house. Me, I'm gonna test things like your water pressure and look for any cracks or anything in the house. I'm just gonna give a really good set of eyes on the house when I am there. And also when I'm there, I'm gonna point out some things that you should do to declutter to get your house ready for pictures. And this part can be a little sensitive for, for people because it's taking things out of the house. And isn't my decor so wonderful? And the thing is, it's great. But we want those pictures and we want those buyers when they come into the house to see the house and not to look at all of your wonderful decor that you have. 
and you're gonna be packing it up anyways, so you might as well pack up some of those things right now. During this walkthrough through the house, I've actually had some seller clients like write down notes of, this is what I need to declutter, this is what I need to put away, this is what I need to take off of the walls, and I love when people do that as well. And I'm also writing down my own notes. I'll have my phone with me and right in my notes app, I'm writing all the things that you tell me about your house so that I can know that if any agents happen to ask me any questions. And while I'm at your house, I'm gonna make the decision of whether or not I wanna bring a stager into the house to help with the decor. And it's kind of one of those, it just depends. It really just does depend. If I feel like I can come in and tell you what to clean, what to remove, what to declutter, and we don't need to add anything else, then yes, and we don't need to hire a stager. The stager that I like to work with doesn't bring in furniture and doesn't stage the entire house with new furnishings and all this stuff. The stager I use and love is absolutely wonderful. She will come in and she will just add decor pieces if you don't really have any decor pieces up. They will add stuff to the bathroom, add stuff to the walls that actually matches what you currently have in your rooms. So if I do bring a stager in, then we'll schedule that appointment of when she can come to the house. The first appointment with her is usually about 45 minutes. She'll go through, take some pictures of the house, write some notes of what she needs to bring back the next time she's at your house. And what we wanna do is we want to align the next time she's back with photos with you getting the house ready to sell. So in that time, let's say it's a week or two, if I've recommended some things for you to fix up or a little touch up paint for you to do or declutter, then that's when you should be doing that in that one to two weeks time so that everything can align up nice and perfectly. So you're decluttering, fixing things up around the house and the stager will come in and she probably takes three to four hours. Honestly, it just depends on how much staging she actually brings for the house. And I'm always there to help and facilitate her during this process. So you don't need to be there if you can't. And then the next thing I've done is I have planned to have pictures taken right after that stager leaves. In an ideal world, that is what happens because we don't want you to come home or your kids to come home and mess things up before we take the pictures. So if we can plan it to all happen and align at the same time, that's what I love. And while you're getting stuff ready for the house, I'm working in the background, getting all the necessary documents ready to go in MLS. Those documents that I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we're gonna talk about those now. So here in Texas, there are things that have to be provided when selling the house. So the first thing is the seller's disclosure. I'm going to leave you a hard copy of it, but I'm also going to send you an electronic copy of it for you to fill out. I like to have this back from you when we hit the market so that the buyers and their agents have this information and a lot of questions they may have about the house are in that document. So I love to have that ready to go. Other things that I'm going to gather from you is maybe if you have the survey on this house. If you do, then I'm also going to send you something that's called a T47, and that is something that needs to be notarized in regards to the survey. Based on the survey, again, if you have it, you're going to write on the T47 if you have changed anything to the boundaries or to the property itself that would change anything on this survey. So let's say you have this survey, but you added a pool. Well, then on the T47, you're gonna to have to note that you added a pool and you're gonna to have to have that notarized. Or maybe there's no changes at all. Then you would put on the T47, no changes. Again, have that notarized. I like to have both these documents ready to go before the house hits the market because in the contract, we do address when the buyer is supposed to receive that survey and that T47. And also in the contract, we have to note when the buyer is going to receive the seller's disclosure notice as well. That's why I like to have all that information ready to go so we're not scrambling to get it once we're under contract. Another document that may or may not pertain to you and your house 
is regarding lead-based paint. If your home was built before 1978, then you have to let the buyers know if you are aware of any lead-based paint being used in your house. And that's a document, of course, that I provide to you. You have to sign it, I have to sign it, and then the buyers of the property also have to sign it as well. But again, that's not for every property. Other documents that I'm gonna ask you for is if you've had any repairs done to the house, if you have those receipts, if you had the roof replaced three years ago, it would be so wonderful if you had that receipt. Any repairs or any updates that you've done to the house that you have a receipt for, I'm going to ask you for those because I like to give the buyers of the house all of this necessary information so that they've got it. So now we're at the point where I'm gathering all this information from you and you're cleaning up your house and maybe we've got the stage you're coming and we've taken those pictures and usually those pictures are gonna be back that same day or if not the day afterwards. And what I've already done as well is I've input a lot of information about your house into MLS, which is our multiple listing service. This is going to document absolutely every single thing to the best of our knowledge about your house. But I also put in there that the buyers and their buyer's agent have to verify all this information in their due diligence period. This MLS listing is going to be in the incoming status, which only I have access to. No other agents, nobody else can see this MLS listing. What I'm gonna do is when I've got all that information in there, I'm gonna send it to you for you to approve to make sure I didn't miss anything and also to make sure that the information I have in there is correct. If everything looks good, great, awesome. Once I get those pictures, back from the photographer, then I'm going to put the listing as coming soon. I like to do that because that lets only real estate agents know that this property is coming soon. In there as well, I also put the date, the rough date that the home will be active. And sometimes I put it in coming soon without pictures and sometimes I do, it, it just kind of depends. But I do like it to be in coming soon, a couple of days before we actually do hit the market. I like to drum up some interest in your house so that when we are active, those agents can schedule those showings. And speaking of showings, that's another conversation that I'm gonna be having with you, is when do you want to allow showings to happen at your house? In our showing time system, I can put time parameters, like no showings before 9 a.m. or after 6 p.m. Or maybe you work from home, but and you always have a meeting at one o'clock on Wednesdays. Well, I will make sure that we block off that time as well. So it's very customizable to your schedule. Once the home is active, everything will be in MLS. The MLS listing that you have approved is there, the pictures are there, and then all of the documents that I've gathered from you, I have scanned and I have inputted into MLS so that the buyer's agents can read through that information and pass it along to their buyers but also something else that I do is once the home is active and I've got those pictures back then I also create a binder and some flyers that I leave at your house in this binder it's going to be all the information that you have provided me the seller disclosure the t47 the lead based paint addendum all of that's going to be in there so that when a buyer's agent comes through the property with their clients, then they can read through that information. And you may be thinking, well, it's online, they can read it through there, but I'm also a buyer's agent. And there are some times where I show one client five houses in a day. Well, do you think I have everything memorized in that house that, we going, that we're going to see? No, I don't have all that memorized. I don't remember everything. It's a lot of information to remember. So as a listing agent, I wanna make sure that I've left all of that information for those buyers and their buyer's agents to look through and read and hopefully get some questions answered. I also leave some flyers there so that the buyers can take that with them to remember your house. In an ideal world, I am listing your house on a Thursday or a Friday. Friday. That's when it goes active because lots of people like to go house hunting and looking at houses on the weekends. So listing it on a Thursday or Friday is a great time for them to come in through the house either on those days 
or that weekend. And a lot of times I'm gonna be hosting an open house for you as well, if you want one to be done. And that will usually be on that Saturday or Sunday, or depending on if I know there's gonna be a lot of traffic, it'll be on both days. Again, it just depends. I like to tell my clients that if they can leave the house for the weekend, go away, go on a staycation, but if they could just not be at the house through the weekend, then that is great because all the showings that come in, you're gonna have to leave the house and then you know, maybe come back, you've got an hour, you can come back before the next showing and you just never know. Right now we're in a really strong seller's market. There's still a lot of buyers out there looking for houses. So there could be quite a few showings over a weekend and it may just be easier for you to be out of town. But of course, that is not mandatory. Well, that's it, everybody. I think I have gone through exactly what my steps are to get your home ready to sell. If you've got any questions below or if your agent did something a little bit different than I did, I'd love to know that in the comments as well. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I will see you next week.